On tonight's episode of Mr. Norris's In Case You Missed It, we look at Tecumseh's Confederacy. Who was the Native American Tecumseh? What was he trying to accomplish? And what are the lessons that we can take away from his life? Warning, warning, historical data incoming. Hey, hi, hello, and what is up, everybody? It's your host, Mr. Norris, the history teacher with the good hair. And tonight we're going to be talking about Tecumseh's Confederacy and Tecumseh's War. What a fascinating topic, one of my favorite topics. Not a lot of people know about this little episode in U.S. history, and it's, it's honestly a great story. A little bit of a sad story, but some great lessons to be learned here. I'm going to take this lamp off my head because I look like a crazy person. And um, yeah, we're just done with that. Oh, oh, can, I cannot have that. That's at least kind of better. Okay, let's move on from the... From the hair. All right, so uh, yeah, tonight we're gonna be talking about Tecumseh's Confederacy. Okay, so first and foremost, who is Tecumseh? And there's the name right on screen there, so you can kind of understand how it's spelled and how it's pronounced. Tecumseh was a chief of the Shawnee tribe uh, who grew up right at the end of the French and Indian War, was born in 1768. Uh, and essentially Tecumseh's life, uh, it's pretty much just all kind of a sad story, it's a tragedy. Um, he's born and the Shawnee tribe is mostly located in what is now Ohio or the Ohio Territory, and pretty much all Tecumseh sees as a kid growing up uh, are U.S. settlers, or at that time just European white settlers, taking advantage of Native American tribes and taking their land. Uh, and eventually those settlers would become obviously U.S. citizens. Um, when Tecumseh was very young, his father, also a member of the Shawnee tribe, uh, was killed fighting uh, white settlers who were encroaching on Native American land or trying to protect Native American land. Um, so Tecumseh kind of had grown up with this struggle his whole life. Um, now, uh, in 1794, Tecumseh, as a pretty young man, he's roughly in his 20s at this point, um, gets involved in a battle called the Battle of Fallen Timbers, which is a really crucial battle. Uh, it was part of like a Native American defense in Ohio where the Native Americans uh, eventually lose to U.S. forces and have to cede a bunch of land. They sign a treaty called the Treaty of Greenville. And basically, it, it, for the most part, removes Native Americans from Ohio. So Tecumseh and his family, his tribe, their home location of Ohio uh, is no longer going to be that way. They're going to have to move from Ohio. And they settle in what is now uh, Indiana uh, in the uh, Upper Northwest Territory. Well, Tecumseh is pretty angry about this treaty because the tribes that signed the treaty and the tribes that agreed to the treaty, they just have fundamental different beliefs than Tecumseh does. They believe in uh, a term called accommodation which you see here on the screen. These Native American tribes felt that the more that they worked with the United States and tried to become more civilized or more American, that the United States would leave them alone and let them have their land. Uh, and Tecumseh kind of saw right through that ploy. He realized, sorry, my dog is making just insane noises on the ground right now. Forget that. Um, Tecumseh kind of realizes that um, Back at that time, even if you try and take this accommodation stance and work with the United States, they're not going to just let you keep your land. They're eventually going to come and take it. Um, and Tecumseh just doesn't – there's that. Tecumseh just doesn't agree with their uh, philosophies of, you know, not defending their land. Tecumseh decides to take his troops and change his message. Anywho, uh, Tecumseh decides to take a different stance or – have different ideas than these accommodation practices. Uh, and he decides to try and start his own confederacy. And basically what Tecumseh hopes to accomplish is he realizes that if just one Native American tribe tries to fight off the United States uh, to defend their land and, and to defend land for all Native Americans, that's just not a winning battle to fight. But if you're able to recruit all of the tribes across North America together into one confederacy to stand against the United States, then you have yourselves a better chance there. As even at this point, there's still hundreds, if not thousands of tribes out there. And then, uh, you know, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that maybe Tecumseh can get on his side. Uh, and he realizes that Native Americans need to start working together uh, if, if they have any hopes of, you know, protecting their homes and defending their lands. Him and his brother decide to start this confederacy. And his brother's name is Tanks Watua. Yeah, that's not your uh, typical everyday name, Tanks Watua, But it's really fun to say once you figure it out. Um, we'll also refer to him as the prophet. Tanks Watua, also an interesting character. He was a former alcoholic, um, and he blamed his issues his, in, in you know, previous years on Americans, on white settlers for coming and introducing alcohol to Native Americans. 
he looked at that as them bringing some kind of evil influence to them to try to get them to, you know, think differently and make false treaties. And then when he finally, you know, stops drinking, uh, he starts speaking out against U.S. settlers. And basically he becomes uh, or thinks that he has become a prophet, that he can speak to God or the great spirits uh, that the Native Americans worship and that they are guiding him and guiding his decisions. And he also kind of believes that he has some kind of like godlike powers I don't know, Tanks Watwa, I'm not going to go that far with you. Um, but basically, he's like the spiritual leader of this confederacy, and Tecumseh's more like the political slash military leader of this confederacy. They set up their confederacy in a place called Prophetstown in Indiana, and thousands of Native Americans in nearby areas hear the calls of Tecumseh as he literally rides out to these tribes and speaks to them. And they go to uh, Prophetstown, and it becomes kind of like your own little like wartime village uh, during Tecumseh's Confederacy slash Tecumseh's War. Uh, and this all starts to shape and take form in 1811. Now, the governor of Indiana at the time was a man named William Henry Harrison, uh, who also had some military units at his disposal. And he kind of becomes Tecumseh's arch nemesis and Tecumseh kind of his arch nemesis. And they have a series of meetings where they try to hash out agreements uh, over land. Tecumseh wants to absolutely cede no land to William Henry Harrison and is even asking him to give some land back. And William Henry Harrison wants the exact opposite. He wants to cede more land of Indiana for U.S. settlers. He makes a treaty called the Treaty of Fort Wayne with different tribes in Indiana. Uh, and just based on that treaty, William Henry Harrison kind of thinks that he can take what is now Tecumseh's land. And Tecumseh is outraged. Um, on one particular meeting that they have, Tecumseh meets with William Henry Harrison in a, in a small town and brings about a thousand of his warriors. And they come decked out in war paint. And William Henry Harrison is uh, pretty shook, as the kids say, when they get there. He's a little scared. And William Henry Harrison basically lays out the deal for them. Look, we already made a deal with another one of your tribes. We consider this land ours. And Tecumseh gets up and starts speaking. And obviously, he doesn't speak English, so William Henry Harrison can't really understand him. But during Tecumseh's passionate response, he looks at the rest of his tribe and he's like, um, now is our time. Let's kill all of these guys, including William Henry Harrison. And William Henry Harrison's listening to the speech and he's like, wow, you know, even though I can't understand what he's saying, this is really good, really passionate. It's got me moved. I'm pretty concentrated and focused on this. He taps one of the guys next to him and says, like, what is he saying, by the way? And uh, his buddy's like, oh, well, judging by the fact that Tecumseh and all of his followers are reaching for weapons, I think he's telling them to kill us all. And William Henry Harrison's like, um, uh, excuse me? Oh, oh, okay. All right. Uh, and that true story. Yeah, true story. Tecumseh in one of his meetings with William Henry Harrison, who, by the way, is a future president, tells all of his tribes people, let's, let's get these guys. Tecumseh's message was not one of peace. Um, it was to take up your sword, take up your tomahawk, and defend your land uh, against the encroaching United States. Well, anyways, they set up this little warlike village in Prophetstown, Indiana, and Tecumseh realizes that he's going to need more people on his side if this confederacy is really going to work out. And in particular, he's eyeing in the southeast region of the United States at that time, uh, in areas like Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, you have the five civilized tribes. Now, why are they called the five civilized tribes? And by the way, those tribes are the Cherokee, Chickasaw, Choctaw Creek, and Seminole tribes. They probably had the most power and influence of any Native American tribes at that time. Um, they did the most business. They had the most wealth. They had massive amounts of people. And they were kind of also trying to take, for the most part, that accommodation style where they were trying to adopt American culture and American businesses and American clothing, thinking that that would let or convince the United States to kind of leave them alone on their own land. Well, we'll see how that works out later on. <laughs> Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson. That, that's coming in a later video. Anyways, uh, Tecumseh rides out to meet with these five civilized tribes and he says to them, look, we're the United States target right now, but I'm telling you, they are, they'll be coming for you soon. If you don't join with us now, they're going to get rid of us, and then they're going to come for you. And the five civilized tribes are kind of like, oh, to come say you're crazy. <laughs> Two interruptions by chance. Do you believe it? God. Anyway, Tecumseh's recruiting trip to the five civilized tribes uh, down in the southeast really just doesn't go well. The only faction that kind of sides with Tecumseh and will take up arms uh, during the War of 1812, is the Red Stick faction of the Creek tribe. Um, but it's really not enough to do any kind of damage. Anyways, before Tecumseh leaves to go on this recruiting mission, he leaves the prophet in charge, Tanks Watua, uh, in Prophetstown, Indiana, and he tells him, look, William Henry Harrison and his forces are nearby. While I'm gone, do not engage them in a fight. 
Because if you do, we are not at full strength yet. We are not ready for this fight yet. And, you know, if you fight them now, you, you could potentially ruin everything. And Tanks Watua uh, to comes his little brother in perfect little brother fashion. It's like, uh -huh, okay. And then does the exact opposite. Yeah, Tecumseh rides out with, you know, some of their forces. And William Henry Harrison knows this. And he goes, you know what? I'm going to take our troops and let's march right outside Prophetstown and kind of dare the prophet into a fight and see if he falls for it like a sucker. Well, guess what? He does, right? He decides to lead a nighttime raid on William Henry Harrison and his forces right nearby the Tippecanoe River. Uh, and this is where the Battle of Tippecanoe takes place. And William Henry Harrison forces make quick work of Tanks Watua and uh, some of the Shawnee tribe. And they, they actually have to flee and leave Prophetstown. And William Henry Harrison and his forces march on Prophetstown and burn it to the ground. So this recruiting trip for Tecumseh is an absolute disaster. He leaves, goes to the southeast of the United States to try to recruit tribes, is largely unsuccessful, and then he comes home and his home is burnt to the ground. He immediately has a falling out with his brother. He's like, little bro, what the heck? And Tanks Watua is like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that when you went on this recruiting trip, you didn't want me to attack a U.S. force and have our homes burnt down. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, he should be sorry. Tecumseh basically gets rid of his little brother. He kind of doesn't really have a relationship going forward. A big outcome of the Battle of Tippecanoe is William Henry Harrison and his forces discover that some of the munitions and weapons that Tecumseh and his Confederacy are using are, in fact, British weapons. And if they are using British weapons, then that means they are in cahoots or they are allies uh, with the British. And this is one of the causes for the War of 1812, which Tecumseh is actually also a participant in. Um, after the Battle of Tippecanoe, Tecumseh pretty closely aligns himself with the British in the Northwest Territory. Uh, and he figures that having their support will help him and his people be able to defend their land. And at first, uh, once the War of 1812 starts, this goes kind of well. Uh, the American expedition in the Northwest Territory that's trying to invade Canada is largely grossly unsuccessful. And Tecumseh plays uh, a big part of that. However, um, they do make some small gains at some point during the War of 1812. And the British want to fall and retreat back deeper into Canada. And Tecumseh's really not with that plan. He's like, look. You know, this this might just be territory to you guys, but this is my home. And I don't want to, you know, retreat deeper into Canada. I want to defend it. You guys, you're my allies. You said that you would help me. Well, the British kind of leave him hanging. And he eventually runs into William Henry Harrison and American forces again at the Battle of Thames in 1813. And it's here where Tecumseh kind of makes the last stand for his, his people and his confederacy. Uh, and he dies at the Battle of Thames. Uh, and pretty much... His dream, his vision goes to the wayside with him. And this is going to be the last most significant Native American rebellion that we see in the United States. Um, I mean, there's some other ones after this. Chance you are killing me tonight. Um, but none is going to be as large or as impactful or as meaningful as Tecumseh's Confederacy. Why do I love teaching about Tecumseh, which I do? He's such an interesting character in that uh, you can have so many different conversations about him. Is he a hero? Is he not a hero? Right? His... His vision, I think we can all agree to some extent, is heroic. Chance, I'm trying to make a point. Um, but he, he he is preaching violence, right? He's, he's saying to fight and kill the United States of, uh, of America or its forces. Um, is he a hero because he had heroic goals but didn't quite accomplish them? Is he an American hero? Should we look at him as an American hero? And then that brings into question, like, what exactly qualifies you as an American? Um, you know, is he an American because his people – uh, his people's ancestors were here first. Is he an American hero because his the ideals that he believed in were life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? And that's like the most fundamental thing, American thing that you can believe in uh, besides the dollar menu at McDonald's. Um, you know, it, it's it's so much, uh, so many interesting topics that come from studying Tecumseh that I just absolutely love. I find him to be a fascinating character. But there you have it. That's Tecumseh's Confederacy, pretty much the largest attempt at a Native American rebellion in American history. And it is actually one of the biggest causes of the War of 1812. Not many people know that, but it's an interesting story. I uh, hope you liked the video. If you did, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would be just fine. Remember that history is life. And in the words of George Washington, the surest basis for public happiness is knowledge. So go out there and get some, everybody. Have a good night.